and welcome back if you are new around here then hi nice to meet you and if you are returning then thank you very fucking much for coming back my name is alana and i am a 34 year old lady from scotland that's where the accent's from i do like a sweary word on the channel just so you know that gives you your wee word of warning there to get the fuck out of here if you don't like swearing or cursing that's quite all right i don't mean it with any malice so Today's video, oh look, today's video, raise my hand there and then it all went a bit mad. Um, today's look, this is today's look, today's video is the you pick my makeup. So what I done was I went onto Instagram, I was on boots, I had a lot of boot points. Boot, boot points? <laughs> Didn't know whether to say boot or boots there. So I had quite a lot of points and I thought, right, what's out just now that people are really into? what's bougie stuff that people are a brand that they always like things like that people are raving about and what are really good staples from our drugstores so i hate saying drugstores because you don't really say it here in scotland what we just say is boots just boots or super drug that's just what we say but i gave lots of options so for instance i went onto my stories and i said okay i'm thinking about getting i want you to pick my makeup which primer would you choose? Would you choose Fenty or would you choose Physician's Formula and put a poll on it? So that is how this came to be. That's how this video came to be. And I've picked up a lot of nice new stuff. Some things I do already own. Obviously Boots Points, like, you know, I had a lot of them, but things are expensive. So like this alone, you know, you're looking 30, 40 pounds for this. So things are expensive so i couldn't afford all of it with the boots point so what i done was throw in some items that i maybe already owned but were in similar categories and then that way if that came out on top i was like well for instance the becca highlighter was one of them and everybody wanted to see me using that so i thought well i already own that but let's be fair here i'm not a millionaire i make no money from youtube and i am actually a full-time nurse so this is how i have done it i've done it this way and i hope that's okay with everybody uh, it's still you picking my makeup it's still all things that are available at boots uh, and you can still pick up and buy at boots it's just so happens some of the things i already own i hope that's okay but if you like the look of this and you would like to see how my thoughts and feelings go and first impressions in some cases with what everything is on my face today then just keep on watching all right where to start so it is half past two in the day and we do have quite a lot of nice natural sunlight yes i'm really hoping like i know it's not going to happen to april i don't know who i'm fucking kidding but i am really hoping that soon we come away for these dark dismal days and nights but funnily enough it was snowing earlier as well so you know it, scotland is one of these places you can have four seasons in a day easily you could probably have five if there were five anyway we're going to start off with uh sorry i suppose i should keep the lid on make it look fancy uh this is the fenty beauty pro filter soft silk hydrating primer base uh, i got the hydrating one that was the one basically um what i'll do is i'll tell you each section what i put up and what you guys picked uh it's weird saying you guys because I know I'll have a lot of people on Instagram who don't necessarily follow me or vice versa because they are kind of, they're one and the same but then there'll be a lot of people who just don't watch YouTube, a lot of people that just don't use Instagram. So what I put into this category was only two things, the Physician's Formula Spotlight Illuminating Primer or this one here from Fenty and this is the one that won by a mile. So I have obviously already done my skincare, let me just pin this hair back it's getting lighter and lighter by the day i really need to recolor it but while i wasn't feeling very well i just thought that's the last thing on my mind um so it is looking a little a little bland um right so that's oh, here now i look like 1940s or you know that kind of style right so i'm gonna use two pumps do we think i'm gonna two and a half right i think that looks like a reasonable amount and I'm going to use this as my primer slash base today. I'm kind of more dry than I am oily, but especially at this time of year. In the summer it's different, but I prefer to look dewy than I do kind of dry. And to be honest with you, I, I don't wear enough heavy foundation for it to really break up around about my face. That's probably the best way to explain it. But today, the foundation that you've picked is a foil coverage, so <laughs> how this will go. I actually need to have another pump. I've not got any on my head yet. 
So I've got another pump to do the top of my head. I've never used this primer yet. This is the first time I'm using it on the camera today. It feels nice. It doesn't have that overly silicone-y feeling that some primers that have like that, bl the blurring prim primers, they're not really the ones I like. But what I will say is, I don't think it's leaving my skin feeling super dewy and juicy either. So we'll see. It also doesn't feel overly moisturized and I did obviously put my skincare on this morning. It is now, as I say, later on in the afternoon. But it doesn't feel as juicy as I'm used to. I usually like some wee bit more juice to it, a wee bit more oil maybe. So next up, the foundation that you picked. Oh, uh, oh, uh, do you see this behind me? Just causing carnage back there. Do you mind? So yeah, as I said in the intro, I gave you options that I maybe already had in my possession as well because I don't have that much money. It's a bit crazy to think I would be able to buy it all. But I always gave like a kind of more high-end option, kind of trendy option, and then like more budget, budget kind of things. So I gave the Fenty Beauty, and I'm sure again, this was the hydrating, this was the option that I gave. I gave the lasting radiance from Rimmel, which is one I already had in my possession and thought I need to start using that again. I gave this one, which is the Laura Mercier, and I gave the NYX Born to Glow, and again, the Laura Mercier came out top trumps here. And this is the Flawless Lumiere Radiance Perfecting Foundation. Now, I did speak about this in my watch noon February, and I didn't realize this was a full coverage foundation. By the name of it, I just kind of thought, that's gonna be a, nice dewy like lip from within sheer foundation but it is certainly not so i picked up the shade 1n2 which is vanille now on the camera this looks kind of yellow next to my skin it actually looks really yellow uh, because i am fair i'm light but i'm also this funny shade of pink we've talked about this before it's a brilliant scottish phenomenon where you can be nice and fair and in the sun you might go in a shade of lobster uh, but i actually in the sun do take a tan obviously i always wear spf of 50 anyway but if i wear spf i do tan i go into more of a kind of pink brown <laughs> That's why I always struggle with bronzer as well. Uh, and I don't really like orangey bronzers. I always like one that's a little bit more on the red side because that is the natural colour I would go. But it's definitely a tan. It is not burnt, I promise you. I just look a little more flushed. Whereas Alan is very olive in skin tone. He goes completely nutty. Like, he just looks at the sun and he goes dark, dark, dark. And very, very olive, sallow complexion. Now, this I'm going to take a couple of pumps of as well because the pumps are actually very, very small. So I'm going to take, I'm going to take three, right? And the thing with this is, when I put this on, this was actually really pale on me. I also tried it with my hands, but because it's not that emollient texture that I'm used to, it didn't really work. So today I'm going to try it with a brush. I've got like a kind of stiffer brush and then this kind of stippling one. I really like using this one for foundation. So I'm going to give it a go and I'm going to start by kind of really buffing it in to the brush and even on my hand it looks yellow but weirdly when I put it on I was like why has it went so pale on my face? I don't know. It must just be my redness that, that counteracts the yellowness. I don't know but it definitely goes on a lot paler than the foundations I'm used to and sometimes I feel a little bit like see if you're a pale person it sometimes to me it looks a little healthier this is my personal opinion it doesn't have to be yours but looks a little healthier if i go for something that's a little more tan or a little more yellow than going for exactly the same shade or something that's really really fair and like pale because i look sick you can see it on that side of my face it's not a bad match it's okay but you can definitely see it's really took down a lot of my redness. Um, I guess I'm just not used to, I'm just not used to the the appearance of having like my skin go completely different, really, to be honest with you. And I have obviously wore full coverage foundations before, but it's been a long time. Um, and it's not something I regularly do. And I still like to use my foundation relatively sparingly. Once you buff it in, it seems to do okay. The other thing I would say as well is it's a little drier than the foundations I'm used to. Initially, when I put it on, I was a bit like, don't know about this, but 
what I will say is that after a few hours of wear, the radiance, the flawless radiance claims, I can see why it's got that name. Because to be honest with you, my skin did look luminous and it did look nice and radiant and especially under whatever lights I was in my house, I was like, my skin looks okay actually, it looks like normal, nice, radiant skin. Let me zoom you in and show you my skin close up with this on as well. All right, so you can definitely still see my skin coming through. I'm not gonna say it doesn't do that. Around right here, it doesn't really gather or anything like that, but as I say, I really have only kind of placed it here, the excess that was on my brush here, and then here, I put a little extra as well. It has gathered a little here, just in between the brows, but not horrifically. And there's not really anything like in the smile lines. Here is where I am experiencing, oh, sorry, <laughs> something on the lip. Um, here's where I'm experiencing the most amount of kind of peeling and things from retinol at the moment. And actually, it doesn't look too bad. It looks okay. So I'm now going to go in with the Shiseido Synchro Skin Self Refreshing Concealer. And I got this in 201, which this one on the skin looks really like it matches me, but when I put on my face, it goes a little yellow. You can't win. So with this again, I'm just taking it on the tiny little areas where I've maybe got some pigmentation, where I just need a little bit more cover the edge. I really like the applicator of this, I don't know why, but I kind of like that it's like flexy, <laughs> I don't know. And I'm just going to take it ever so slightly here um, and it certainly sets more than glossy stretch would do. If you don't like glossy stretch because you think that never sets down, that's not for me, this one certainly does. Uh, but obviously for me, I'm aware of how creeping can occur a little easier when you're using something that sets a little. So I think you have to work kind of fast with it. Not too fast, it doesn't, it's not ridiculous, but a little faster than the glossy stretch. But it's not like one of the ones where you'd have to do your eyes and then like don't go and do anything else and leave it there, it's not that bad. All right, so that's the second or third time I've had that shade of one underneath my eyes. And I have to say, might be unpopular opinion, I don't love it. I really don't love it. Um, I've heard so many good things about this concealer um, from people who loved glossy stretch, people who like that kind of thing, people who are a little bit older and they say it's really luminous and they like the dewy skin look and they like that fresh, like almost sweaty glow. And I'm gonna tell you right now, they are not two of the kind. They're just not. This is much more of a traditional concealer as far as I'm concerned. And I think it looks a lot drier under the, underneath my eyes. Uh, I'm going to zoom you in again and let you see what that looks like on the face with spots or concealing um, darkness, anything like that, fine. But under the eyes, I don't think it's for me. Okay, so on the camera, I don't think it's going to really come to much. It, it looks fine. My eyes look okay. But if I could, I don't know if I can get right in. Can you see how kind of crepey it just looks a little crepier? than I would like. And yes, I am screwing my eyes up to get that look. It doesn't look like that when I look at this. But it's setting. I don't know. It just looks a little dry as far as I'm concerned. A little dry and a little flakier than I am used to. Right, we're going to move on to eyes now and... I am going to be working with the Copper Palette from NARS. Now I gave you the choice of Fenty Beauty, NARS, the Voyager Palette, and I did pick the Copper one because I thought, well, it's going to be more the colours that I'd be playing with. And I also gave you the choice of the Huda Beauty Khaki one or Milani, I want to say. There's a Fenty Beauty one and a Milani one. So I gave you a little option. I just all chose this, which actually really surprised me. I really was like not expecting that. It's probably the one I probably would have went for, to be honest with you. But I really, really expected for it to be Rihanna. I thought Rihanna was going to win it. So we're just going to do a bit of basic bitch eye look because obviously it's a warm toned palette. So I'm going to go in with this one first and just take that kind of all over the lid. So this is Bal Harbour. All right. So I'm just going to take this as a really like nice 
kind of warm tone I actually think as a single shadow even that is actually really very nice um, something that I would absolutely just sweep across the lid I actually really like the little Voyager palettes I think they're quite interesting um, not interesting they're not um, you know unbelievably like innovative or anything like that but I like them because it's kind of like I could throw that in my bag take it somewhere anywhere in the world and I think I would have enough in it to achieve what I needed to do I think it's a palette you could absolutely just take and have and love and use for a million different situations I don't think it's going to be something that you're going to only use once it's a very good kind of everyday day-to-day -day palette I'm going to go in with this one now and kind of deepen up in the crease and I'm going to go in with a slightly smaller brush but this beautiful kind of real orange colour which is called Ocean Drive they've all got, is it just me? They've got names like Ocean Drive it's not blue, like it just to me seems a bit odd if I name for it right, whoa this one again, beautiful orangey tones to it absolutely gorgeous this i know you're like fucking boring as shit this is my go-to so i'm actually really really glad people picked this one because this will get a whole lot of love from me um i will probably end up putting this in my everyday drawer now <laughs> now that i've used it i think it's really nice again i love the ease of like this has taken me all of five minutes not even five minutes just to get those two colors on and it's really effective as well what hmm, i'm wondering what do i think in this in comparison to petite heat these have shimmers in it so i suppose that way means that it's got a little bit more versatility to it all right so it's like a golden a copper and a brown i think i'm gonna go with the golden over the top of the lid they're not high impact shimmers they're not I'm not gonna lie but there's enough there you can see it, it's got an effect to it, it's not just, there's nothing on the lid. You can definitely see it there. This is something that, you know, maybe people will be like, I wouldn't want orange eyes on my wedding day. But this is something that I would be tempted to do. Maybe not quite the orange, maybe just use the slightly, the lighter tone that I used in a little softer manner and a slightly different eye shape as a, a kind of wedding day look. Not that, not that that's happening, don't anybody see if I ain't get any friends messaging me now or god forbid my mum watches this and gets too excited <laughs> um no that is not happening but i think it could be very very nice subtle kind of wedding day makeup as well actually uh, again depending on your skin tone because that lightest color on me actually came up quite um warm and then i am going to go in with a small brush and use that second color again oceans drive just underneath now I could take a little bit of that dark brown, I think I might actually, and just run it close to the lash line. But I'm just going to do one of these kind of little fake liner situations, um, because I didn't actually ask any like liner questions on Instagram. Probably because a lot of the time when I'm doing day to day looks, liner isn't something I reach for straight away. It's definitely something I would wear on like an evening out, and it's definitely something that I enjoy when I'm doing kind of bright or colourful looks but it's not something that I go for absolutely every single day but I will run a slightly deeper shadow along the lash line all the time just to deepen up my lash line make my lashes look a little th how many times can I say lash there make my lashes look a little bit thicker and there we go I actually I think that's really nice I think it's really nice it's just a very plain Jane warm tone look it's a very simple it would be a very simple look for me to pull together in like 10-15 minutes and be out the door and look like I've made an effort but not not actually done too much. I really like it. Now for brows, you know how it is. My brows are my brows. I don't do that much to them. I gave you the option of Elf Wow Brow because it is something I already own. Glossy Boy Brow because it is something I already own or the Anastasia Brow Power. Now Glossy won but you've heard me speak about Glossy loads. So I figured what I would do is use the Brow Power and then put some gel through it, well, some boy brow through it. I'm a little dubious about this because me and brows, I'm not very good at them. So let's give that a bash. I'm going to just put a little bit more through the front here and I'll be back with you. And herein lies the problem if I put anything through my brows. 
and I promise you, <laughs> even though now I look like I've got these massive, massive bricks, I promise you I've not even put that much through them. Like, I really haven't. And it's just at the front. What is that? What is that? Oh my God. I just can't. I just can't even get over how crazy I look right now. Okay, we're gonna go on with mascara. So mascara, you chose the NARS Climax Mascara. So basically, the Climax Mascara uh, has been on my channel loads. I think I first tried it back in August, I want to say. And I thought it was brilliant. I thought it was so, so good. You got to choose from this one, It Cosmetics, which coincidentally I did end up buying anyway. Uh, a Maybelline one I think I put up and... Oh, what was the other one? Or a number seven, uh, it was like the 360 mascara. Now, I always usually curl my lashes, but I'm not gonna do it today because I want you to see what my natural lashes are and then what this does. So I'm gonna zoom you in a little for that as well. Uh, this is my natural lashes. I don't have a lift in them. I haven't been able to do that for a very, very long time now. Um, and I'm just gonna show you what this does with what I would say is one coat, but probably means like 10 sweeps. Because let's face it, one coat just means the first. <laughs> The first time you're footing with your mascara, doesn't it? All right, so that is one coat on my lashes. I think it's really nice. It looks a little spidery at times, I know. But I kind of think, as far as a volumizing mascara goes, this is as far as I'll go. I prefer ones that are a little bit more separating than the ones that give you a lot of kind of volume because I don't like that spider eye effect. That's a little better. Just brush through it a little bit more, but I haven't dipped again. Um, but that's my natural eyelashes and that's it with the Climax on. I really like this mascara. This would be my night out mascara when we were able to go out. I think it's a lovely mascara. It does have a little bit of fall down. I'm not going to claim that it doesn't and it was obviously a more expensive mascara. What I would stick to is that you absolutely can get mascaras from the drugstore that probably are costing you 10, 11 pounds and things like that. I think that Flower Beauty one that I've kind of got back on the train with is 11 pounds. And I used to really like the L'Oreal Lash Paradise as well. That was really nice too. So you can get mascaras in the drugstore that do a really nice job. But would I repurchase the Climax one? Yeah, I absolutely would. Because I've really enjoyed it while I've had it. And it might be unpopular opinion because I think a lot of people were a bit like, oh, this is crap, like it's it's giving me fall down, it's awful, I hate it. I actually really like it. I like the effect it gives. I like how it really opens my eyelashes up, my eyes. It makes them look much wider. Um, next up, what did you guys pick for me? Right, so the Butter Bronzer. Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. And I gave a few options on this as well. I said you could have Benefit Hula, um, NARS Laguna, again, because they're both things I already had, but I threw in this one and I threw in one from Sleek as well. And every, this this is the one that I think this one won. Well, I'm looking, I'm looking. Right, so I tell a lie. This one and the Benefit Hula, they were one apart. One apart. And I was like, right, okay, fine. Let's get this butter bronzer. People all us love it. These guys have, I think when I was on Boots, they had four to six shades of the Butter Bronzer. I just went with the classic bronzer. I think actually when you went in, it was like choose your shade and there was light, medium, dark, and then there was bronzer and then there was like golden. That might be the, so I went with the classic, I went with the bronzer. But this is not like the one I've seen on many YouTube videos. There's usually like Butter Bronzer written on the front. I did do this online, obviously, because at the moment we cannot go into the shops. So, I don't I don't know. Like, I, have I got the right one? I don't even fucking know. It's not even the one that I put on, <laughs> like, on my little Instagram screen. It doesn't even look the same. The packet's different. Or have they just rebranded slightly? Is that all it is? Okay, so, yeah, it does, does smell like a weird chocolate coconut. When I first smelt it in my February Watch New video, I was like, Meh. but now that I've actually delved into it with a brush, I'm like, Okay, so I can definitely smell it now. Whether that's for you or not, that's completely personal. I don't mind that it's got a smell to it. Some people seem to love that it's got a smell to it. What I'm gonna say is, it's taken a wee bit of building. That's not a bad thing with bronzer. Sometimes you don't want it to be like straight away because you end up going a bit too ham. That's it there. 
that's not too bad. And I don't actually think for my, the only thing I'll say is, sorry, tangent. This is obviously on a lighter foundation. If I had this on with my more classic foundations, would it be quite as effective? I don't know. Um, which colours of this do you have? What do you go for? And is there a difference in the yellow brighten one? I don't know. Am I being a diddy? Right, we're going to go again. It's blending very nicely. I have to say that for it. Don't feel like it's skipping at all. And I do like to take my bronzer right across those cheeks because as I've said already, I would be getting sun all the way across these big boys. I actually think for my skin tone, this is a nice, almost contour shade. It's light enough that I can build it up and it's warm and I need that because I've got that pink undertone but it's not too yellow. But I find that the Hula one is just a little bit more red undertoned which actually probably suits me in the summer a little bit more. But that, to add a bit of shape back into my face, I do not mind. I think that's quite nice. All right, so for blush, you guys picked this Rose Doral colour. Now, this is Milani and I think I gave the options of one was the Florence blush because I had spoke about that in my blush tag video but also because I thought I want to get some use out of that so if people want to see it, they want to see me using it, that's fine. But I also gave the choices of the Honest Beauty cream blush again because I love a cream blusher and the Rude Cosmetics. Rude Cosmetics, is that something you get in other parts of the world or is it just in the UK? I, I kind of had never really heard anything about them until I seen them on Boots. I don't know. Um, anyway, I picked the Rose Doro rather than the classic Milani one. I can't remember what it's called. It's like an orangey tone, isn't it? Like a coral orange. Because I think all year round this is going to suit me a little better than that orangey one. The orangey one would probably be okay in the summer, but in the other times of the year, I think this is going to be a bit more wearable. So I've went with this one. Let's just see how this goes. I've got it in a really big fluffy brush for the simple reason I just want it to be sheer and if I need to build it up then we'll do that. It's definitely a sheeny blush. Can you see that? Oh yeah. Oh oh yeah. You can see that on my face. Jesus. Okay, Alana. Jesus Christ. Also, it feels so strange putting um, purely lots of powder products on my face. And with having this foundation on that I feel is a little more dry. <laughs> <laughs> feel a little bit like I'm like <sighs> like everything's been sucked down my face and now this is not what I'm used to um at all that is a really really pretty blush though this is causing a little more texture than the dewy kind of creamy products that I usually use I know it's got highlight in it I know it's got like that sheen to it but I feel like the texture of my face is quite apparent there um than I'm used to I think that this is very pretty. I do actually really like this. I think it certainly has lifted my face a bit. I think it might be something that is a little bit more up my mum's street, if I'm honest with you. I don't know. What do you think? Do you think it's nice? Uh, I think I'm losing a bit of light here. Hold on. I'll zoom you in and let you see how that's all laying on my face now. So you can see here it's definitely got this sheen to it. I actually think it's quite pretty. Uh, the bronzer is blended beautifully, that's really nice. And here, on this side, again, sheen is nice, it's okay. I feel like here though, I don't know if you can see it, there's a little bit more texture than I would like or be used to. But again, it's not bad, it's not horrific. Um, it's just, what is this on my face? Please tell me this is not attached to my face. Is this attached to my face? Hold on. Jesus, is this on my face? Oh my God, come here. No, it's not attached. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it was, but uh, it's just like something that won't come off. There we go, we've got it. Like, don't get it wrong, I've got them. I've definitely got them. Kicking about, there's like a long one here, I bet you. Uh, but yeah, I don't think I've ever had any of that quite dark before. But yeah, that's the shade on the cheeks. I think it's quite pretty. I've got this Laura Mercier Make It Glow Powder, which was one that you guys picked again. I gave you the option of this one. It came on with a little brush too. Um, I gave you the option of this one, and I gave you the option of the Beauty Bakery 
powder, their translucent setting powder. This is the glow one because my kind uh, neighbour and friend Syrah uh, dropped it off at my front door. So I imagine this is going to be a smidgen like a highlight. I'm going to just try it on the back, like the inside of my arm first because if it is really, really yellow and really, really golden, I'm going to use that as my highlight instead instead of using it as a setting powder because the highlighter that you guys all picked was Becca's Moonstone and I already own a mini of that uh, and I gave you the choices of the Becca Moonstone, the Fenty Glow Matchstick or the Milani Strobe Light and so I gave two cream options and people still wanted to see the Becca so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tip a tiny bit of this out into the cap I have swatched this on my arm but it does have some glow. There's certainly some glow there. Wait and I'll show you. Can, you. can you see the sheen on my arm? So it is a little bit more yellow than my skin tone. Yeah, it's certainly golden. More golden. So I might... Oh, I don't know where to put this now. Let's just dust it. Let's just dust it across my forehead. Let's do it. Bugger. If we're gonna make a balls up, we may as well do it in the last step, right? Is it making me radiant? Yes, but does it look like I've put a very light dusting of highlighter on my face? Possibly. Um, I'm going to put it here. <laughs> I know you'll be like, why? Why would you put it there? That's where people get oily. But it's a translucent certain powder, right? With a glow. So why wouldn't I put it there? Now I'm using a Laura Mercier foundation. So if I'm setting it with the powder, it's actually okay. I think if I went in a bit heavy, like if I just dipped in and then went straight on, I would look like the Tin Man. It's definitely like highlighty. I think again, it's just all a little much for me. I think this is something that, although it's bulky, is something that I would particularly love to have when I'm on holiday. I love dewy, sweaty, sunny skin. And if you were really bronzed, I even think putting that like down your legs or along your decolletage would be really nice. And again, on these kind of areas where you need the glow. But there's a lot of glow coming off that blush right now. But, oh no, I just spilled it. I've got black jeans on, shit. I'll try it again. I'll try it, as I say, again, with different foundations, different things like that. I'll give it a few goes. And if I don't use it, then I will pass this on. I always would pass it on to somebody if I'm not using it. But we'll keep going with it. And let's just, for good measure, because as if we've not got enough on our face already, add a little bit of the Becca Moonstone. <laughs> because this this is like, you guys, this is what you wanted to see. The people on Instagram, they were like, let me see all the sheens and all the sparkles. People seemed to really want it. So that's what I'm doing. Personally, I think this highlighter is lovely. A lot of people have um, said opal, but opal was too too dark on me. It was just a little too golden. Whereas this one, this one is gorgeous. And finally, for lips, you guys picked the Beauty Bakery Lip Whip, and this is the matte one. I picked up the shade Syruplicious. I don't know if it's gonna go in this look. I now have a horrible feeling this is a really mauve color. There was also one called Ginger Snap or Ginger something. I think that one might have been more suitable, but you know, that was my fault. I just asked what you fancied. You just named the lipstick, I picked the color. That's my fault. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line my lips first. Okay, so Rumor is a slightly darker lip liner, but I felt that the other colors I've got are kind of pale and this probably needs that darker tone. And actually it probably looks like it's a very good match. I don't know how I feel about this. I don't know if the color is right. I don't know if it's a color for me. That's the problem. I do feel it's a little bit greyish and now, now as I'm talking, it's getting sticky. Oh my goodness. Uh, it's certainly getting very matte very quickly. Do you know how I feel just now? I'm gonna just be honest with you. I just feel like I'm caked in makeup. I just feel like this is all too much for me. And I'm sure on the camera, it probably looks quite effective to a certain degree. But when I can see my skin in real life, 
this looks like quite heavy makeup. I just prefer the dewy, lighter look. That's just the way it is. I just feel like I look really done up now. Again, if I was going a night out, if I had somewhere to go where I thought I needed long wearing makeup, I needed something so in photos maybe I was going to have a lot more structure to my face. Yeah, it would work, but this is a lot. This is a lot for me. All right, so it's a lot. It's a lot for me. It just feels a lot on my face, but I think the overall effect is quite nice. I think I'm just used to something a little bit different, that's all. And I don't think it looks like I'm like, oh, you know, I've got lashes on and like dead done up when I'm just looking at myself here. Could that be just because everything is on my face at once? I'm so used to just using kind of cream products and the odd bit of powder to put essentially three powder products on my face at once. But what I'm going to say is I really, really like the NARS thing. I think that's lovely. Love the eyes. Obviously, I love NARS Climax. It's one of my favourites. Obviously, I like Glossy Boy Brow. The Synchro Skin Foundation, um, not foundation, concealer, I'm going to have to keep working with. I can't say I'm in love under the eyes. Not at the moment, anyway. Uh, again, if I was going for this in, in the all over look, it doesn't look out of place. I think I just prefer it for spot coverage and pigmentation to even out skin tone. And if using a dewy or foundation, maybe that would help with the texture of it. And this lipstick, no, I do not like this. That is probably the one thing out of everything that I'm like, absolutely not. The blush, I think is really, really pretty. The bronzer, I think is lovely as well. Um, the Laura Mercier powder, I think is lovely but just maybe a little yellow in my skin tone. That's all. I think it's a very nice powder and I'm going to try it a few different ways. And if it doesn't work for me, I obviously will pass it on. But this lipstick, this, this is not for me. I think this is super duper cat butthole, mega cat butthole. I think if you had your lips done and you have a nice pout, then it would probably look really nice. But on me, it just looks like my ribs are so dry. So, so very, like, give me a fucking drink, please. Um, but everything else, I think, as a whole, looks okay. It's just very odd for me, that's all. It's just very strange. If you want, if you've used some of these products and you think, actually, there's a better way to go about using that, please let me know. Uh, and if, like, for instance, you're like, well, actually, I mix this with a moisturiser, I mix this with a tinted foundation, blah, blah, blah. Let me know and I will be more than happy to take on some of your advice. Anyway, I'm going to leave it at that just now and I'll see you all again in the next one. Bye. <music>